APCC Book Club of the Air for Young Adults. I'm Kitty Feldy, and I am joined in studio by a trio of young people who are members of a mother-daughter book club in Calabasas. Alana Nevins, Sarah Loeb, and Olivia Berry. Welcome, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Our book this month is called Yolanda's Genius, and it is by Carol Fenner. But before we talk about the book, I have to ask you, Sarah, about this mother-daughter book club. Who started it? Well, Alana started it, and she gathered um, some of her friends, and then we all, like, read the books in the month. And then uh, one uh, mother and daughter pick it, and then they, we host it at their house, and they ask quest- questions, and... And Alana, why did you think this would be a good idea? Um, well, my mom and me really love to read books, and a lot of our friends do also, so we thought it would be fun to um, just read together and discuss books. What's been your favorite book so far? Mm, that's hard. I liked it <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it's always hard. Well, let's talk about uh, Yolanda's genius. Olivia, why don't you start us off with just a brief summary of what the book's about? Okay, Yolanda is a very large girl. She's very sure of herself, and she's very smart. She can take care of herself. She lives in Chicago, and it's kind of a rough neighborhood. And when something terrible happens at their school, they move. Her little brother, Andrew, is extremely talented on the harmonica, and he's kind of shy. He doesn't talk very much. So instead, he plays the world kind of on his harmonica. But one day, these big boys, bullies, ruin his harmonica and Yolanda um, has previously decided that he's a genius after reading the description in a a dictionary. So she has to try to figure out how to get Andrew to keep playing his harmonica and to prove to the world that he is indeed a genius. Well let's stop right there because you picked exactly the part of the book that we have asked our guest reader this month, Cheryl Duvall from Marketplace, our sister show, to read just a little bit of. So let's hear just a little bit from Yolanda's genius. She made a beeline for the reference section, where a huge dictionary lay on a stand. She flipped open the pages to the G's. There was genius. She closed her eyes and prayed, do I want to be? Do I? So what if I'm not? She took another bite of her chocolate bar. She was hoping the word genius would mean something about wanting to know, being hungry to know things, wanting to shine brighter than anyone. Genius. Exceptional or transcendent intellectual and creative power. Like God, she thought, making the universe. Well, I'm sure enough not God. She knew she was pretty smart when measured up against most of the yo-yos in her class. She could talk like her teacher and use long words that most teachers didn't even use. She wasn't sure she was exceptional or if she had transcendent intellectual and creative power. She would have to look up transcendent. That would be a good new word to surprise Mr. J with. Next, under genius, she read, a natural talent or inclination. She wasn't sure her abilities were so natural. It seemed to her she worked hard at classwork and at figuring out what would earn praise and admiration in school from those who counted. She wasn't sure a genius would go to all that trouble to identify those who counted. Those who counted were most teachers and the principal, not the kids lounging against the wall at recess cupping cigarettes, not the game jocks shooting baskets or the lively rope jumpers or the clusters of whispering ninnies. They don't know diddly nothing, thought Yolanda. Then the next statement in the dictionary grabbed her interest. A man called John Hersey had said, True genius rearranges old material in a way never seen before. The words startled her. Yolanda's mind, caught off guard, began to click and whir. Rearranges old material in a way never seen before. Or clicked her mind, rearranges old material in a way never heard before. Andrew, said Yolanda, with a gasp of disappointed wonder, Andrew is the genius in the family. Again, thanks to Cheryl Duvall over at Marketplace for helping us out with the selection um, from y- Yolanda's Genius, which is our July selection for the Book Club of the Year for Young Adults. That whole idea about what is a genius, Alana, have you thought at all about that? Well, I think that it's like someone that I agree with what the book said, that it's just naturally our gifted. And Andrew really was because I don't think he even noticed he was a genius and rearranged all materials. Do you know any geniuses, Sarah? Um, Well, I think that, like, authors are geniuses Mm. because they, like, take all that time to write and then they, like, make the characters have a special talent. Creates a whole other world for you right there. What about you, Olivia? Have you thought about who's a genius in your eyes? I don't know. I definitely agree with Sarah that it's authors. Um... 
like especially when they come up with something that's never even crossed anyone's mind. Like what? Like J.K. Rowling, for instance. She has come up with this whole world, and now it's a world in everyone's eyes, mm -hmm. and it didn't exist before her, and now it does. And it's really incredible. Who else? Who else do you think is a genius? Who else can we put on our genius list? Well, actually, let's do this. Let's throw it out to our audience, and maybe they have some ideas about who should be regarded as a genius. Our phone number, 866-893-5722, 866-893-KPCC. This book also talks a lot about music and jazz and blues. Are you guys familiar at all with jazz and blues? Yes, no? Olivia? Not, not no. very much. No. We actually did take a trip Sarah? at school to the um, the Blue House. Oh, House of Blues. Yeah, yeah. House that of Blues. That place was really cool. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah, because it's, um, it's music that's a big part of... Uh, I used to work at another radio station, and we had a blues festival every year, and B.B. King was there one year. It was very cool to see B.B. King on that's stage. Really cool. That's part of the book, is this whole experience of these kids going on stage. A little later on, we will speak with uh, Barry Dolans, who is uh, with the Chicago Blues and Jazz Festival. We'll talk to him about actually what that's like. Stylistically, let's talk about the writing of the book, though, because this author I thought was interesting. She uses many different points of view. Sometimes you're hearing the story from Yolanda's point of view. Sometimes you're hearing it from Andrew's point of view. Sometimes just from a third-person point of view. What do you think about the style she chose to write it with? Olivia? I think you get a lot more out of the book if you can see it from different people's points of view because you get a whole new look, like view of it every time you hear it from a different point of view. So I think that was good. Was it confusing at all to you that she'd mm -hmm. switch points of view midstream? Not really. Mm -hmm. I usually was able to follow it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else, Sarah? Um, well, kind of it took a little while to get used to that she had changed points of view, but I got used to it and mm -hmm. it was... What about you, Alana? I got used to it. <laughs> Not a I deal. I liked it. <laughs> well, I didn't ask you whether you liked it. You did like the book then, huh? Yeah. Favorite character? Um... Hmm. hmm. Everybody's thinking. Anybody have a favorite character that stands out? Olivia, Sarah? I like Charlie. Sarah? You like Charlie. Tell us who Charlie was. No, Shirley. I'm sorry, Shirley. Oh, you like Shirley, of course. Well, <laughs> explain who Shirley, Shirley Whirly was. Shirley was a uh, girl that wanted to be Yolanda's friend, but I kind of thought that she only wanted to be her friend because Yolanda told all these lies that she could double dutch rope and... Have yeah. you ever done that? Um, no, I haven't. I don't think so. <laughs> you haven't had to lie in order to find friends. No. Why'd you like Shirley? What was there about her? I think that she just took, um, she looked at Yolanda in a different point of view than everyone else did. Ah. Not because of what she looked like, but because of who she was. Who else? Who else did you like in the book? Olivia? I don't know. I really liked Yolanda a lot. She was a very strong character. And there are some things you can relate to about her and some things you can't. But it's like I think almost everyone could find something that they could relate to her about. And she's just very sure of herself. It's not very common in these kind of books that you find someone mm. who's like so confident. A lot of the books, they're like, oh, who am I? I'm trying to find myself. She knew who she was and where she was and what she had to do. How, how um, reflective do you think that is of kids, though? I mean, if you look at, oh, excuse me, if you look at the population of kids out there, how many of them do you think would fit in the Yolanda camp and how many of them would fit in the other young adult novel camp where you've got kids sort of discovering who they are? I don't know. I don't think there are very many people like Yolanda who are just so, like, sure of themselves. A you lot sound of people, like you'd be that kind of person. Kind of. I don't know. I've never really thought about it that much. What about you, Alana? Is anybody in the book who stuck out in your brain as being your favorite character? Well, I liked Aunt Tiny a lot. I did, too. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Tell us who she was. Well, she was um, Yolanda's aunt, and she had, like, a really great life, and Yolanda looked up her as, like, a, one of her really great role models. And she showed Yolanda a lot of, like, things, and she was a person Yolanda could trust and talk to, even though she didn't always open up to people very quickly. The thing about Yolanda and Aunt Tiny was that they were big girls. They were big women. And I think especially for us, I mean, with you guys in school, it's even worse than when I was in school. Being thin is everything, isn't it? Yeah. Olivia? Yeah, kind of. It's a big part of stuff, and it's not good if you're not confident and it's it's hard sarah but most people uh look at you and uh they'll get to know you and if yeah they'll they'll look at you from 
they'll look at you inside, not outside. Mm -hmm. Still, you actually have some mature kids who actually do that. They don't just make judgments on what kids look like when they walk in the door. What about, you know, we talked about this another time about clothes. I mean, if somebody's not wearing particularly fashionable clothes, is that something that one would be, you know, ostracized, you know, separated from the crowd because of what they were wearing at your school? Not really. So they're pretty uh, pretty democratic at your school. What about jump rope? Does anybody, have you guys jump rope when you were younger? Um, yeah. Alana? Yeah. You did? Okay. I thought, whew, God, I thought <laughs> I was the only one that did that. But what about double dutch? Um, no. I think we did try it once. Yeah, what? we tried it. You tried double dutch after reading in the book? Well, no, at no, school. At PE. We um, had a unit where we um, did all these jump roping tricks and stuff, and we... Um, um, double Dutch was one of the things that we got to try. It's hard. And ha- describe it maybe to, especially half of our listening audience probably has never jumped rope. I'm talking about the guys at all. So maybe <laughs> you should explain what Double Dutch actually is. Well, it's two different ropes turning in opposite directions, and the person has to run in and jump over the rope so that they don't get tripped by them. Yeah, it's fun. It's a it's a good workout of one's uh, heart and lungs and all the rest of that sort of thing. Our number to join the conversation, and again, our question on the table is, what is a genius or who should be considered a genius, do you think? Our number, 866-893-5722. This is the KPCC Book Club of the Year for Young Adults. I'm Kitty Feldy, and I am joined by a trio of uh, students from the Wright Middle School, and they are all in a mother-daughter book club. Does it have a name, by the way, out in Calabasas? No name. You guys need a name for this book club. All right. Well, we'll think about that later. If you have a suggestion for the name, we'll take that too. This is the uh, on 89.3 KPCC. Welcome back to the July edition of the KPCC Book Club of the Year for Young Adults. I'm Kitty Feldy. Our book this month is Yolanda's Genius by Carol Fenner. It's set amid the uh, jazz and blues festivals of Chicago in the long, hot summers. My guests here talking about the book are Alana Nevin, Sarah Loeb, and Olivia Berry. They are all at A.E. Wright Middle School, and they are also part of a mother-daughter book group in Calabasas. Let's go to the phones and take a call or two. Of course, the question I threw out there is, who do you consider to be a genius? 866-893-5722. Michael's with us in West Los Angeles. Hi, Michael. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, my, I guess uh, the person who gets my nomination for genius would have to be our president, George W. Bush. And tell me why. <clears throat> because uh, nobody could appear as dumb as he does in order to get his opponents to underestimate him continuously. Uh, without being an incredibly smart person. All right. Well, we'll put that one on the table. We have one vote for George W. Bush there as part of the genius crowd. Thanks so much for the call, Michael. 866-893-5722. Well, let's bring another voice into this conversation. We found out, unfortunately, usually we have our writers with us, but uh, Carol Fenner has passed away. So we thought instead what we would do is, uh, because so much of this book has to do with the Chicago Jazz and Blues Festivals, we would invite Barry Dolans to join us. He is director of programs for the mayor's office in Chicago. And Barry Dolans, thanks for being with us. Thank you for uh, reading such an interesting book. What did you think of the book? I really enjoyed it and actually was first brought to my attention uh, earlier this spring uh, by uh, a mother in Virginia who uh, found it interesting and actually had the desire to come out to Chicago for the Blues Festival. Well, and I guess that's the question we're going to ask the girls here. Are you guys up for uh, traveling to Chicago in the middle of the summer to see some Jews, some uh, blues and some uh, and some uh, jazz? Maybe. Maybe, says Sarah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you guys got questions, though, for Barry, don't you? Yeah. Alana, you want to start us off? Um, I was wondering, when um, in the book, Andrew, he um, is pulled onto the stage. Well, not, yeah. He's um, brought onto the stage to um, show off his talent of being a great harp. Um, mouth harp player. Yeah, mouth harp player. Does that happen very often in jazz concerts? Barry Dolans. <laughs> you know, actually in Chicago we have a Blues in the Schools program where we uh, actually open the festival with, uh, you know, from fourth to eighth graders uh, who have had an artist in residency experience and they come out on uh, 
an earlier stage, not the Petrillo Band Show, but other stages to help open the festival on uh, uh, Thursdays and Fridays. So they actually do get an opportunity to perform. Right. But nobody's ever been discovered and gone on to work with B.B. King. Well, no, I think certainly uh, the author used quite a bit of poetic license in uh, some of this, but um, certainly did uh, make it for an interesting endeavor. And knowing B.B. King, it wouldn't surprise me that B.B. Uh, actually would uh, certainly befriend uh, young people wanting to uh, learn to, to play the blues. Olivia, you got a question? Well, do you get to, like, meet all the players, and is it hard to get them to come? For your shows? Well, it, you know, it's a f it, Chicago puts on free music festivals, but certainly uh, through the assistance of uh, sponsors, we do pay the artists. So uh, they look forward to playing uh, m big music festivals during the summer. And Chicago has a reputation for having jazz 24 hours a day, at least. That's way, the way I always think of Chicago. Well, there's certainly, you know, dozens of jazz clubs, a great jazz institute that puts on the works with us to put on the jazz festival at the end of the summer and we open the summer with uh, uh, the blues festival and um, you know some of these names that were used in the book from Sonny Lance Slim to Coco Taylor or you know Sonny Lance Pass but he was a very close friend of mine mm. and uh, you know we, we have uh, over uh, two dozen blues clubs there's probably more working blues men and women in Chicago than probably anywhere else in the world except for maybe the state of Mississippi Wow Sarah's got a question um, how has blues changed from, like, back then and to now? Well, back then, uh, you know, we had B.B. in 1988, so that doesn't go too far back. But blues was really the music of uh, freedom, so and, uh, and that dates back, actually, this is the year of the blues, and meaning that it's 100 years ago that W.C. Handy first uh, experienced the blues sound uh, in Tudweiler, Mississippi. So uh, th that sound in the last hundred years certainly has gone through a number of uh, styles from solo piano and guitar players to the merging into a band to uh, bringing in horns or, or creating the Chicago blues sound that included harmonica. And uh, much like uh, the styles of music, certainly um, heavily electric guitars are certainly the rage today. Mary Dolans, thanks so much for spending time with us. Oh, it's my pr pleasure. Mary Dolans is the director of programs for Chicago Mayor Richard Daly's Office of Special Events. He oversees both the Chicago Jazz and Blues Festivals. You know, we're running out of time, but let's see if we can take one more phone call. Aaron's with us in Pasadena. Hi, Aaron. Hi. My question is, have you ever been attached to something, like how Andrew was attached to his harmonica? Ooh, that's a question for you guys. Olivia, Sarah, Alana? Alana. Well, <laughs> um, when I was younger, like, I would always bring real my stuffed animals like that, but um, attached to something like that, I don't think I ever really have been. What about you, Sarah? Um, well, I used to have this, well, I still do, but I have this bear, mm -hmm. and I just, I didn't look at it like I look at all my other stuffed animals. He's a special one. What's his name? He doesn't have a name. Oh, how can he be so special without a name? His name is Bear. All right. It's, he does have a name. His name is Bear. <laughs> That's all right. I had a bear, too, Wooby Bear, and I left him in Miami Beach, and I still feel sad about having left him there. And I was that just happened a couple of years ago. It wasn't when I was your age. Olivia, were you ever attached to anything? Not really like a stuffed animal or anything like that. I've never had something, like, so important to me. I mean, there are definitely things that I like, but nothing quite so important. Thanks so much for the call, Aaron, and thanks to everybody else who's called in today. And I want to thank as well a whole bunch of folks. But first of all, let me remind folks that next month our book is going to be discussed pretty early. you got to get started early because uh, it's coming up fast. August 1st is the next book club meeting. We're going to be reading The Wanderer by Sharon Creech. It's a sea-going tale, and it's wonderful. So it's, uh, it's The Wanderer by Sharon Creech. Also, next weekend, the 19th of July, the book club is going to be on stage at the Mervyn stage at Kid City at Exposition Park at 11 o'clock in the morning. So if you want to come out and watch how radio is made, come on out. And you can be on the radio if you are under 20. And if you are also under 20, we are having a contest. We want to try to get next year's bookmark ready.
ready to go. And we need some artwork. So if you are an artist, all you have to do is send us an a email to talkofthecity at kpcc.org, and we will send you the official entry form, and you could win all kinds of fabulous prizes that have K oh, excuse me, KPCC all over the top of them. You'd think I should know how to do this now. I've been doing this for a couple of years and not hit the microphone, but apparently not. Well, let me thank all of our guests this afternoon, Alana Nevin, C um, Sarah Loeb, and Olivia Berry, all of them from A.E. Wright Middle School, part of the Mother Daughter Book Club in Calabasas. Thanks, you guys, very much. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. We also want to thank um, Simon and Schuster for donating 30 books, also to Jill Nevins for organizing today's book club, and also to Julia Blanchard who helps us out. Our producers are Amy Machado and Julia Posey with help from Susie Lechtenberg. Our senior producer is Crystal Smith. Our engineer is Tony Federico. Thanks to our volunteers David Hall, Caitlin Newhouse, Bob Boyd, and Dr. Glenn Mia. This is 89.3 KPCC.